age-old question. What came first, the bottle or the glass? Empty tube, over the bottle. Empty tube, over the glass. You go like that and they change places. I can't get it to work. Carl, how does this work? You know, just go like that, go like that, and they change places. And I, I can't get it to work. But every time I do it, you get a bottle there and, and a glass there. I, I don't know what's going on. Now this next clip, ladies and gentlemen, will take you to the Royal Mot Motor Yacht Club in Sandbanks. It's when I'm talking about Tommy during the war years, how he got that lovely fez. His wife, Dove, actually, got the, amongst many props that she gave me, she gave me his last fez. I'm so proud to have them. But you're going to see me in action now, uh, and see what sort of headgear Tommy used to wear before the famous fez. Just like that. But 1940 came along. Does anyone remember 1940? Yes. Yeah. It was in all the papers. <laughs> <laughs> and Tommy got called up into the cavalry. So he was the same as me, a cavalry man. And he became Trooper Cooper. <laughs> and he used to love to tell jokes about his training and, and being in the army there. And he was telling Parky one day on, on, on the show, and he said, of course, when you're practicing marching time, you've got to do it all by numbers. And the sergeant major would call you up to attention, Shut! and on the number one, you'd bring your right knee up five parallel to the ground. Okay, so Tom was there, and he would get his left and right mixed up. So the sergeant major's brought him up to attention, and what one! And Tommy's got the left knee. Like that. Now there's two speeds in the army. Still is a statue or fastest grease lightning. If you keep still, you might get away with it. And the sergeant major's looking down the rank and file to see if they're up high enough, the thighs are parallel. And he's suddenly noticed. Who's that lunatic with both knees up in the air? <laughs> <laughs> He was on guard duty one night, on stag duty, and as you may remember, that's four hours off, two hours on. And when you're on, if anyone's going to be on tonight, you've got to stand up nice and straight, straight, take the pressure off your back, you bend your knees a bit, and that keeps you nice and relaxed. And Tom was getting very relaxed, and, and he uh, closed one eye like this. That's, that's like, and then he was getting more relaxed, both eyes closed, and you, and you shouldn't do that if you're on guard duty. <laughs> oh, seriously, you, you, you shouldn't. And all of a sudden, he could hear the crunching of the Sergeant Major's boots. <laughs> sergeant Majors can time their halt so they can stop exactly a quarter of an inch away from your nose. <laughs> <laughs> and he had his eyes closed, but he knew the Sergeant Major was there like that. He could feel the hot air from his nostrils on him. And he thought, oh no, I'm in trouble now again. How am I going to get out of this one? And he just had this brainwave. He just suddenly opened his eyes and went, Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was it then. That's where he was going to do his training and he got trained how to ride horses. He said, it's lovely on those horses. He said, it's ever so easy. He said, all you have to do is when the horse goes up, you go up. <laughs> and when the horse comes down, you go down. And so you go along, the horse goes up, and you go up. He said, but one day, the horse went up, and I went up. And when I came back down again, the horse wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> so they did all this training on horses, and then sent him out to Egypt, where they were going to put him in an armoured car. And I said, because I was in the Chieftain Tanks, and I said, it's a bit bigger than me, Tom, but it's a quarter of an inch big. And I said, it was, uh, was it a bit cramped there, Tommy? He said, yes, it was a bit claustrophobic in those armoured cars, especially for the horses. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what happened to all those lovely animals? He said, oh, that's OK, they got sent to the ACC. I thought, oh, that was good. Until I found it stood for the army catering course. <laughs> anyway, there was our Tom in one of the most safest places, but manages to get shot in the right arm. 
and he's got it wrong again. So he's up in front of the OC. He said, what are we going to do with you? He said, what I really want to do, I want to join ENSA. Does anyone remember ENSA here? Yes. What would it stand for? Every night something awful. That's it, that's right, yeah. Every night something awful. But it was the combined entertainment uh, services there. And he wanted to join those so he could keep his spirits up and the morale up while the lads were out there fighting. And he said, OK, Cooper, what do you want to be? He said, I want to be a magician. And I said, well, we've we got no money for expensive prods. He said, don't worry about that. I'll make my own. I'll make my own. And I said, okay then, Tommy, if you, if you can do that, then, then that's fine, and, and we'll give you a trial. And what we're going to have a look at now is some of those classic tricks that Tommy honed in out during the war years in those hot, sweaty nappies. And let's see if we can remember them when he brought them back onto television there. Now, he never started off wearing his classic he wore a pith helmet. Pith helmet. Magicians could do it when they're just six inches apart, some two feet apart. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do it behind my back to make it harder. Is that right? Okay, here we go. Down and back again. <laughs> see the doctor yesterday. <laughs> and he said, I haven't seen you for a while. I said, no, I've been ill. <laughs> he said, what's the problem? I said, it hurts when I do that. He said, well, don't do that. <laughs> he said, no, I have broken my arm in two places. <coughs> he said, well, don't go to those places. <laughs> Fifteen years. And I just go like that and catch him. I, I might just twist a bit. <coughs> I'm going to go like that. Here we go. And 
I said to the doctor, <laughs> I said, when it's better, will I be able to play the piano? He said, of course you will. Why do you ask? I said, well, I couldn't before. <laughs> Fifteen years. <laughs> and then my wife took me to the psychiatrist. Because I keep going like that. And the psychiatrist said, Tom, what do you keep going like that for? I said, it helps to keep the lions and tigers away. He said, but there is no lions and tigers around here. I said, you see how effective it is? <laughs> Fifteen years later. I'm going, to, I'm going to do it this time. No, I'm, I'm, fed up, I'm fed up with this myself. Now. Could I have a, a drum roll on the table, please?